All right, welcome to the CES meeting. This is the last meeting before plenary, that's next week. Um, so our agenda today is that uh, we're going to take a look at, uh, we're going to, uh, to uh, Matthew's going to discuss um, the object placeholder proposal and um, merits and merits of having object placeholders over symbol, um, using symbol keys and weak maps. Um, and then we're going to review the topics for the agenda for next week's plenary and see if there's anything that we need to, uh, we need to be prepared for. Um, Matthew, please take it away. Yeah. Um, I actually was wondering if I should just like, um, steal, uh, Nicole's slides on the records and tuples and go through that very quick. I know you updated them and I haven't attempted to look at them. So, um, let me try to sum up uh, really quick my understanding. At uh, the last uh, plenary, there was a little bit of pushback on uh, object placeholder, which uh, is the name we're using right now for box because there is a lot of uh, confusion around the word uh, box. So an object placeholder in short is a primitive that stands in uh, the place of an object that you can then use in a record or tuple or anywhere where a primitive is acceptable, such as the callable binary. Um, and the idea is that there is a single um, object placeholder value for each uh, object identity. Um, for security constraints, we also required that uh, opening uh, or getting the object from the object placeholder uh, has to be done both through a static method of the object placeholder constructor, not a prototype method. Uh, and it has to contain a check that it's the object placeholder constructor uh, that constructed that uh, object placeholder value uh, that can is the only one that can um, open and get the objects. Uh, in practice, what that means, since there is a different object uh, placeholder constructor per um, uh, realm, is that it is in practice more or less of a realm check. Um, the reasoning is uh, with existing membranes that uh, consider non-object or functions uh, to be primitive and thus to be inert and not contain any authority, um, now it is safe for those to pass those object placeholders through a membrane uh, because um, there is no way to get to the actual object that was represented since there is a, a realm check. Those membranes usually work uh, across uh, existing realms. Um, um, furthermore, the, the reason why putting it on the box constructor specifically is so attractive, if we go in this direction at all, is that way, if there's a box constructor per compartment, then uh, this API already adapts it to be a per compartment rather than per realm yeah. Um, yeah. association. Yeah, in the, in the future, we can imagine uh, not having just a per realm, but a per compartment uh, object placeholder if we decide to. Um, it leaves the option open. Um, all right. so. This is what object placeholder is. Um, the, there was a bit of pushback on why we actually need it and why um, symbol as weak map key uh, is not sufficient. Um, so to remind everyone, uh, the problem that we're raised with symbol as weak map key uh, is that of registered symbols. Registered symbols is one that you get for a symbol for a uh, string or number. Um, and that always give you a specific uh, symbol uh, value. Um, those are not uh, garbage collectible um, the same way as anonymous symbols are. Um, there is a slight variation of those, which is the well-known symbols, basically any symbol defined by the spec or usually uh, accessible from the root uh, through a symbol dot, um, well, not, not quite symbol dot, symbol square bracket. Uh, <laughs> No symbol dot, sorry. Um, okay. So the garbage collection issue of symbols with map keys, one that has been raised and where there's a lot of uh, uh, delegates that disagree on what should be done there. Uh, yeah, let, me, let, let me just interject here that yeah. uh, I think it's a historical mistake that's probably too late for us to correct. 
but it's a historical mistake that the well-known symbols are not registered symbols. Uh, they really are morally equivalent to registered symbols. Um, uh, they can be resynthesized simply by creating a new realm uh, and therefore they have to be treated as if they're registered symbols for all purposes. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't remove the fact that there is still two kinds of symbol. The, if yes. we ignore the well-known, there is registered symbols which are uh, forgeable and then there is uh, the anonymous ones which are unforgeable values. Yes. Um, and un the unforgeable values are obviously uh, garbage collectible, uh, but currently you cannot observe that. Um, the registered ones are not garbage collectible by any means. Um, so the um, one, the alternative to object placeholder is to allow uh, at the very least, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, the objections uh, to symbols with map keys is mostly around like the, uh, which symbol are you able to use as a uh, garbage collection, uh, as a wick map key, sorry, uh, and observe the, through uh, weak ref. And um, the, if you include all symbols, it makes uh, user code easier, but uh, would create memory leaks. Uh, if you don't, uh, that means you have to uh, look, check the type of symbol uh, that you have and, um, and most code wouldn't do that. Um, so I, I'm not sure I'm channeling all the concerns that were there, but th that is the main, uh, main issue. Um, so back to the alternative on how you can, uh, so now we have records and tuples and there's been a huge uh, amount of interest in being able to reference uh, mutable data from uh, in an immutable structure like a record or a tuple. Um, the two approaches, the one that was um, looked at at first was symbol as weak map key. Um, so the idea is that um, you, the program would use a symbol uh, inside their record and they would um, also hold a, a site table as a weak map and be able to look up uh, the object from, uh, from that. Um, the main concern that I have uh, with that approach, the main concerns that I have with that approach are, um, it is not explicit when you look at a uh, record um, that where there's a symbol, you don't know what that symbol is. You don't know if it's something you should look up uh, in a, um, a weak map or if it's just a, another like um, unique value that's used for another purpose. So it doesn't give a synchronization point uh, for libraries to understand each other. Um, the other reason is now that you have a, a symbol, you, you for, for the same reason, the platform or any other uh, predicate that we come up with, uh, when they encounter such a symbol, they have to consider it as part of the, just the value of the record or the, the tuple. There is no way to uh, create a predicate that says like, oh, these two records and tuples are roughly equivalent if it were not for uh, the exit points that they have towards um, towards an immutable structure, uh, towards an immutable object. So it, it doesn't- Matt, Matt, Matthew, are you okay with interruptions as we go? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, it, uh, so one thing that, that that depends on is whether the records and tuples uh, uh, that might have uh, uh, the equivalent of object placeholders are intended to be used directly or if they're intended to be used uh, within some uh, enclosing convention. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, um, so for example, uh, if there's a, con there, there's a convention that's sort of like, uh, I'll just refer to the agoric cap data, data mm -hmm. structure, which is a pair of a, um, well in the agoric cap data case, it's a pair of adjacent encoding and a, uh, an array of exits the corresponding thing, the corresponding analogy would be that uh, anytime you use a record and tuple with a symbol that's intended to be, to designate something else, mm -hmm. it's always by convention, part of a pair right. of the record and tuple 
and a table in and a map in which to look up the symbols. Yeah, and and that um, and that table can actually be a tuple, a part of the record. The record can have a specific structure expressing that. What um, what I mean is that now your record in tuple doesn't have that implicit. Um, Yes. Uh, that then basic expression that some of the values in there are uh, explicit exit points. Uh, it is up to the understanding of uh, the code consuming the record or tuple to to know that. Yes. Um, and where that uh, shows up as well is also in uh, the developer experience. Um, that means in dev tools now the 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 dev tools are not able to uh, show that information. They're not able to show like, hey, here in your record tuple, uh, you have a symbol, but that symbol, um, it's lost that it is actually a, uh, a pointer to, uh, to an object. Um, and that is probably the biggest part in the, in the dev tools uh, experience is like, now you, you can see that your um, st structure that you hold, like your record and tuple structure, is actually not just a, uh, a, a value, an, an immutable value. It also uh, is, uh, it has pointers to an immutable, um, to mutable uh, data. Um, and so having an explicit expression of those exit points that can be shown during the developer experience that can be used as a um, collaboration point between, uh, between libraries I believe at least it leaves that opportunity open where uh, symbol as weak map keys uh, don't. Um, and I need to double check to see if I forgot anything. Um, uh, I, I can add something while you're double checking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was uh, my sense of the objections uh, is that everybody, uh, at the time, including myself and including from all of our prior conversations leading up to the plenary, didn't have a model in mind that Matthew brought up, just sort of briefly mentioned in a closing conversation, that to my mind completely changed how I view this whole thing, um, uh, which is to think of the box not as a container, but as a um, as a as a um, as being like a symbol, being being a um, a a thing that is that is a unique a unique key to be looked up, rather than uh, as a container containing the object, uh, where the the box con the box constructor. And the box dot unbox method on the on the box constructor form basically a sealer unsealer pair, where the box constructor you give it a payload, it gives you back this uh, uh, primitive that doesn't contain anything, but where the box itself the box constructor maintains a side table, associating it with the original payload, and then the box dot unbox is the unseal operation. That, given the, um, the 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 box looks up the payload, and the thing that's interestingly different about that uh, versus symbols as weak map keys, is that the only way to get into the table is uh, um, uh, the only way that a a a box a box value becomes a key in the table is by this call to the box constructor. And therefore, one of the hazards of symbols as weak map keys, that the same symbol indexes different things in different tables is not a hazard in this case because the association only happens on construction. Uh, and and that, that to me, um, the fact that it's not a container sidesteps many of the objections and the fact that it can't be an ambiguous mapping sidesteps many of the remaining objections. So I, I think the, the way it's going to be presented is that it is similar to having symbol as with map keys, 
um, except the object placeholder and get object pair uh, correspond to a single uh, weak map, and that the, the value that you're registering can only be registered in that specific um, associative map. Did, did that and that and, and also that the collection of that map depends on the collection of or, or uh, in terms of garbage, garbage collection the, the, that yeah. map is only going to go away if the um, if the box in this case symbol thing is also going away yeah if you lose access to um, the object placeholder constructor uh, there is no way, uh, or more specifically to the get object <laughs> part of it, there is no way to get access to any of the values, uh, object values uh, behind an object placeholder value. Well, no, I think I, so I was, what I was saying is that more like a question, if you, lose a reference to that box and the association in that weak map goes away as well right yes correct Ex yes exactly like uh but that, that would be exactly the same as uh, a symbol as weak map key well, well the symbol as a weak map key has the symbol for it, which is the no, no no unregistered uh, anonymous one yeah, but but, but it, it it avoid it avoids the whole controversy of yeah. anonymous symbols being like registered symbols because this is just a symbol like thing without that controversy. And um, an extension to that, if we have object placeholder, um, I would be against adding symbol as weak map key. Um, you can you could use that even if you're not using. Yeah. Uh, records or tuples, anything you could use that thing for the, the same purpose. Yeah, because now you can build something that has the same purpose by just putting an anonymous uh, object into uh, an object placeholder. Uh, so you can rebuild the same uh, usages. And now you can actually use um, symbol inside a record or tuple to be part of the shape of the object where the symbol is just a um, an indicator of what is actually contained in a, in a box. So now you can have a description that doesn't, uh, that isn't part of the, uh, you have a description that is part of the value uh, of the recurrent tuple. And that says like this exit point, this is what you will find behind it. Well, this type of thing you will find behind it. Well, I, I do expect that people will not necessarily use it that way. I think it, people will, will probably create a factory, like a symbol like factory where they call it that creates an empty object. Yeah, I, I call that a tag. I actually have all those. Um, I, 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 all have, I have all those helpers written uh, for different use cases. Um, there was a discussion on the uh, TC39 discourse about like people wanting to build um, generic tagged records. Uh, and I, I build it uh, based on, um, on, on all those concepts. Yeah. Yep. This, this, this semantic account of, uh, of object placeholders um, uh, does suggest a simplification, a further simplification of the semantics um, that uh, for, for which there are, you know, will be many pro and con arguments, which is uh, right now our notion of box is that it has no, uh, it does not have its own equality semantics, but rather two boxes made by the same box constructor containing the same pay or or associated with the same payload are equal to each other, whereas the symbol-like account of the box semantics uh, would much more naturally suggest that every call to the box constructor makes a unique box that compares the same only to itself, so that two calls to the box constructor with the same payload, um, uh, uh, they would still make two different boxes um, because the box, it's, it's really the, each call to the box constructor makes a fresh box identity uh, that compares only to itself. That's yeah, much, that, that would be much more yeah. simple. But, but, that breaks, back... but that breaks the, the, the records on tuple, right? You yeah. create two, two records of the same shape, it will not match anymore. 
Yeah, now you, now you need to have a weak map to be able to look up what the right version of the box is so yeah. that you can uh, end up with uh, equality semantics again. It's, I, 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 I did not understand that. If you build two records where one of the um, uh, pieces that you put in that record is a, is a box and you want to compare them, um, whether you do, you do by syntax or you do by manually creating that record, but let's assume that you use the syntax for, to create a new record and then there is a box inside that record. You create it in the following line, the same thing. It doesn't do tri triple equal anymore. Well, if it's the same box, if it's the result of the same box creating- No, the, the, different the, boxes, the, different call to the well, box constructor by the same object, which is the so, nice thing today. So, so there's no there's no syntactically implicit call to the box constructor. No, I, I know they have to be explicit, but the, um, uh, I, I think from a program usability point of view, it's easier if you uh, return the same object placeholder value for a given uh, a specific object. Uh, it is it, when you. When those are being used, if you want different um, meaning and has, does have a different identity of the object placeholder, what you can do is, is, is use a, a wrapper concept that you build. So each wrapper generates its own type of, uh, of wrapped, and then it would be a wrap. It would be a box of a wrapped object. So, so, so I, 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 I understand what's being alleged here, but I don't understand why. Um, why? It, uh, if I want the same box identity, then I would just reuse the same box. And in any case, the current semantics is not the that it's 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 the it's compared equal if it's the same payload. The current semantics is it's compared equal if it's the same payload uh, where the box is created with the same box constructor. So right now we're comparing on a pair of things. It has to be the same box constructor and the same payload uh, and why not just have it be the same box creation uh, yeah. then 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 there's not really a, a well so I, an, an example that i have maybe that example helps let's say that i have uh two pieces of the program that are accessing a, a node a dom node an element from the dom and they create a record that contains that node as a box uh, and other things around the, the, the record. And, and then you want to compare that. So if you want to, uh, if, if the current semantics dictates that no matter how you create a record, if the shape of it is the same and the constructor is the same, the record will be the same, the same. No, it's not, that, only if you're using the same box constructor. Yeah, you're using the same. You're not talking about multi realms, like single realm. I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking about multi compartment. Right. I'm talking about a single a single realm, not multi not multi compartment. The same thing. So you're. No, I'm talking. So so whether it's a, I'm talking about multiple box constructors. Yeah. I, so you're you're talking about uh, the user land uh, being able to get access to different box constructor and uh, and use those. Um, uh, for different purposes. It's just... <sighs> then I don't, I don't understand what Mark is saying then. So you're talking about, uh, at least my, my understanding is that if, if, if you're using two different boxes, constructors to create the boxes on the same object, let's say it's same domain iframes, stuff like that. And then you, you access the iframes um, window, you get the box constructor, you call it with the same object, that you call the outer realm box constructor. Is that what you're saying? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a perfectly fine example. I, was have, I had in mind multiple compartments within one realm, but yours is more straight. Yours is a better example because we don't have to argue about what the compartment semantics are. It already comes up with, um, with, with uninsulated realms. Like you said, same origin iframes. So it, the current semantics from what I understand then these two things are not triple equal. Right. And you are arguing that they should be triple equal? Is that no. What you're saying? no, no, I'm, I'm arguing that because they're not triple equal, you're not getting the equivalence 
the, the, that, the, that, the, that the equality argument that you were making already falls down. Uh, I, see, and, I see, because if you, if you're not using boxes, but you're just using a record, they will be equal. Or if you're keeping track of what box, you know, if, you're, if you've got the logic to reuse the bo a bo a box instance, when you want the equality, then it's by virtue of your logic for reusing the box instance that you've preserved equality. So, I see. So, Mari, the, the thing is, so from what I remember you, you mentioning at first is that through a single box constructor, uh, why do we, uh, if you pass a, a specific object, should you get the same object placeholder value or should you get a different one every time? Um, and I believe there should be a one-to-one -one association from a box constructor. So if you have a box constructor object pair, you get a single object placeholder value. Um, you, it, it, there's a, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between, uh, between those. Uh, so, 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 so I understand that that's the current sort of, you know, semantics we're going for here. Um, and I, I do think it's defensible. Like I said, I think there's a lot of pros and cons uh, with regard to the shift that I'm suggesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's certainly not obvious to me that the existing semantics is superior to the suggestion. Uh, the suggestion is that it's not the same based on the pair, yeah. but, it's the, but, but rather that every call to the box constructor uh, creates a fresh identity that compares only equal to itself. Well, the, the thing is, you can uh, you can build one from the other and the other from the other one. I, I, I agree. I agree. So the the question is, uh, so since you can since from one you can build the other, no matter which direction you go. Uh, the question is, what is the most uh, useful uh, for programs and uh, in my opinion, the most useful for a program is this synchronization point that you have a box constructor. You um, now anybody creating records and tuples can rely on just having access to that um, uh, intrinsic box constructor uh, that is global um, to generate records and tuples that will be equal uh, when you uh, use the same objects in them. Uh, and let's face it, this is the main you, this is the main use case. We want records and tuples to be comparable, uh, triple equal like that. Um, and people don't want to jump through hoops, in my opinion, to uh, to make that happen. Now, if if we didn't have that, we would need access to that special um, box unique box constructor uh, that would have to be built uh, from the uh, intrinsic that we provide that doesn't provide that capability. Uh, okay, I understand the argument and I might very well end up buying the argument, um, but the, I think it, I think the other semantics is both simpler and less surprising, and whether it's um, how it matches the use cases, uh, we might be having blinders on with regard to what use cases we're considering uh, because of what use cases we've been considering to get us to here. So, so, so I'm content to put this argument on ice for now, now that it's been recorded, um, uh, but I, I, I definitely want to um, think about other patterns for using um, records and tuples uh, to, before I consider this settled. No, I, I agree. And people have, have, have shown interest into it, um, having different, basically with the tagged stuff, it's, that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to have, uh, an ability to express what type of uh, box they have. Um, yeah, I, I'm very sympathetic with Mark's position. Um, the, the fact that you're doing new box and every, it, it returns a, the same thing back to you, that's weird. 
uh, for some developer, that would be weird. But I, I, I feel that the, the, the counter argument for not allowing someone to create a record that is identical to the record that you create um, is, is interesting for me because um, if you know how to create that record, you have access to the share object uh, that you want to box. And then you know the shape of the record, you'll be able to construct an identical record. Um, and I'm the one creating the original record with that same shape. And I have no saying on that. I would not be able to protect myself or someone impersonating a record that I know that I'm the one creating and no one else can create the same thing, something like that. And, and so with, with, with this new semantic that Marx is describing, I will be in control. So the, the, whoever is writing the program will be in control of the identity of the record and who can recreate the exact same record. Because in order for them to create the exact same record, they have to have that thing, that, that box somewhere or a way to access the, the box based on the object that the box contains itself. To clarify, it is possible to create that behavior based solely on box and, and weak maps. And I actually have uh, done that as a uh, wrapper registry. Um, so if you want that behavior, it is possible- and to user land. So you mean in user land? It so is possible yeah. to write it in user land and I have written it. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, I, I agree that I agree that each behave each semantics can be derived from the other. So there's not a, a question of fundamental capacity uh, uh, as a as a killer argument one way or the other. Yeah, it's it's literally is what should the default uh, be, and which which use case do we consider um, the most prevalent? Thanks, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, that helps. I'll send you the gist uh, if you want. <laughs> yep, yep. Let me take it. Cool. I think that we can call that a wrap. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> maybe we could call it an oople. Anyhow. <laughs> Boy, I did not get that one. No? I mean, no. you got tuples and duples and triples. Ah, oh, got it. We could call it an oople. We could call it a loophole. Anyhow. Um, Wouldn't it be an unipole? It, uh, yeah. Un, un, or sing, I think single is actually, anyhow. the. <clears throat> so topics for TC39 next week. Let's take a look. Uh, there's the button. There it is, agendas. Am I looking at the correct window? What do you guys see? I see the TC39 agenda. Okay, cool. I need to tab over there. There it is. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so here we are. Uh, looks, uh, I opened up some tabs speculating on what we would be interested in looking deeper into. Um, so far, I figure normative use on finally's realm when creating functions in promise prototype finally is possibly something we'll want to look at. Um, Shadow realm stuff, I'll like Kariti uh, or, or Leo, feel free to chime in on, on, on this one when we get to it. Uh, there's been an update to the records and tuples proposal as referenced. Um, and decorators are up again somehow. Uh, and then array from async is up, which I find obvious. This, this I think falls in the category of making JavaScript more JavaScripty. As, as Chip would say, <laughs> extrapolating the features from the features already to the air to the, the ones that obviously should be. Um, okay, so uh, let, me, um, let me run this by you all first. 
let's see if I missed anything of interest. Um, let's see, we've got import meta symbol two string tag. Are we worried about this? I, it's relevant to compartments perhaps, but I'm not worried about it at all. What, what is it? I don't know what it is. All right, I'm pulling that open. Um, we'll come to it, that it one. Will, okay, actually, we, I, I think that one is probably not, dis, not discussion worthy. Um, okay. Symbol dot two string tag controls the uh, serialization two string uh, of objects. So like how you get brackets, like, you know, object window or object map or whatever, if you do the, um, um, if you serialize an instance of something. So okay. that means that um, if you serialize an instance of import.meta, uh, which right now probably just shows up as object object, it would instead show up as, you know, object import meta. I see. I see. So there, there. So there's not a data dependent thing. There's just for 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 all occurrence for all import meta objects, they would all have the same two string tag, just identifying that it's a meta yep. object. Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I agree. We can we can we can just um, yeah. Well, we've discussed it now <laughs> in its <Okay>. entirety. <laughs> okay. There's like yeah, the next further. request there. The promise finally might be. Interesting. All right, let's take a look at that one right now. Uh, on finally's realm, changed promise prototype finally to use the on finally's realm when creating then finally and catch finally. So the embedding use the embedding uses on finally's realm global when checking if jobs global is fully active. Well, this looks gross. All right. But also probably not user observable because whatever you return is going to get wrapped by the calling realm's promise. Uh, I think the point is that it is observable, isn't it? Uh. So can somebody cut? So so that's I think the best way to to try to understand this is what would be a piece of code that has two different observable outcomes depending on. Uh, whether this PR is accepted or not. I honestly always get confused with the, it, it, I'm gonna guess it has a lot to do with the HTML plumbing for realms. Uh, and uh, I always get confused into when those things with promises, how that interacts. I know it's a big mess, but. There, there's a, a, a link uh, to test262 in the thread. The last comment, oh yeah, yeah. No, no. It no, that was it? No. Uh, the third comment. Yes. All right. Yeah, it's a small code in here. Oh, I see. I think I see. Could you explain? Um, supposing that you had a promise that was um, interacting with callbacks, callback functions that were constructed in a different same origin iframe, for example, um, what the observable difference is, is that if you were to call then and capture um, those callbacks from the calling realm, you would then be able to observe that their function constructor is from the other realm. I find this hard to care about. I, f I find it hard to form an intuition. Yeah, that too. <laughs> about, I do, I do feel like, like I should, like once uh, once we have an intuition, there should be a co one compelling and one answer that's compellingly right. But you have to understand the problem, how to think about the problem to know which that compellingly right answer is. It might very well be what's proposed here. Oh wait, no, I misread this entirely. I think I misread this. All right, let let me go through it. 
And, and well, just in case this is a intended code, like the assertions are reflecting uh, what they intend to have. Yes. Um, so suppose that you create a realm and you get its global object and then use its global object to evaluate this code in order to get a uh, um, an other realm function called on finally, okay. right? Um, so we have an, on, an other realm finally uh, callback. We're calling, uh, we're calling, uh, we're calling the finally method of our own promise prototype. Um, okay. This object, yeah. With a thenable. Um, Which and then, Oh, yeah. with a thenable, okay. Yeah, so this is going to end up getting coerced into a local promise so that we can observe. No, not a local promise. That's the point. It gets coerced into a promise from the other realm because it was called from uh, finally. That means Wait, that, that means hold, that, hold, hold, what, I'm sorry. Let's when you say uh, other realm is getting confusing here. Let's let's name the two realms. Oh, it, it literally is called other in. Uh, in okay, okay, okay. <laughs> good point. Good point. Good point. So, so we have a name for it: the other okay. realm and so, own realm. <laughs> okay, but so so on line twenty four, promise dot prototype dot finally dot call. That's clearly the finally method of this realm. Uh, right. It's being called on a thenable that's created by an object literal in this realm. Yeah, you're right. Um, be all local. The every everything's this realm until the on finally callback, uh, and the on finally callback is that that is just providing a function. So the idea that the on finally callback is determining the promise, which is apparently the current semantics that they're trying to change. It sounds like the current semantics is insane and the semantics they're proposing is compellingly on the only possible right one. No, I actually don't understand how, I actually don't understand this. Why would the realm of the first arguments pass to finally be indicative of... Oh. It's the first argument, it's not the this, it's the first argument. Why? Why? Yeah. Why is that the one that uh, ends up giving the realm to the type of the arguments pass to then? Ah, uh, that's so. What's going on here is that then is being called as an effect of calling um, finally. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, if I understand correctly, uh, the line twenty-five. Yes, this then finally are uh, and catch finally both with the underscore, they are uh, built-in functions that are created. And uh, the specs that are being proposed are to create these functions according to uh, reusing the same realm of the function that is given to finally. Oh, okay. In that, so the, let me, let me, in that case, I was exactly Do, backwards. It sounds... Yeah. It sounds that, like the, the, the semantics being proposed is insane and the current semantics is probably correct. If you go to the metadata uh, in this test, like line 11 to 14, is where you actually get the these parts, where you create these built-in functions. The, the, the test case that we're seeing here, the, the, the two asserts, is that the proposed behavior or is that the existing behavior? This is the proposed behavior, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. What is the existing behavior? I think the existing behavior, uh, the assertions on line 31 and 32 will fail. Yeah, because the what, 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 what? would be local functions, not other. Uh, so this, this would be function prototype constructor. Okay. It would pass if case, this were function prototype constructor. Okay. In that case, I think that the proposed semantics is fatally bad and the existing semantics is correct. Yeah, I have a feeling that type of issue is actually occurs in other places. This is if, if this is making it consistent with other insane behavior. I'm not sure. I am guessing uh, this is making consistency with um, 
the then and catch methods. Yeah. If, if that's true, then the then and catch method methods as currently specified might be insane. Yes, but they are. It may become became web reality, which is uh, uh does anybody depend upon that? This is if, if I, I, from what I understand, HTML spec is going to extreme length to actually have this behavior. Uh, I am going right. to get someone is relying on this somewhere. So, not exactly. Um, the HTML spec explained this behavior, and it was something I complained about a while ago when Shu explained it. And it was on behalf of other people from HTML. Basically, there's a Windows settings object, which is truly strange. And when they can't determine something, they don't know what caused the callback to be invoked, what frame or what execution context, which is a thing in HTML. Um, they needed to assign it to some behavior by default, and they chose, what did they call it? The incumbent realm. And so, they all we, they want all the callbacks to use the incumbent realm. Okay. And when this came up, when this clear. came up before, I thought this was for some odd case that was browser only. It was not just um, it was not something that could just come up in JavaScript. The code here is clearly just JavaScript code. And with um, the exception of this thing right here. Oh, it's the create realm which causes it to be the same. So the change was only able to be reproduced in browsers, but the creation of another realm means that the behavior they demanded as the effective behavior is exposed. Okay. This is not a lexically scoped semantics. This is a dynamically scoped semantics. This is yeah. this cannot enter JavaScript. And they the know it's, it's already dynamic. present in if it's already present in JavaScript with then and catch, it has to be fixed. Uh, it exists, but is not possible to get to a node, to my knowledge, only in a browser. It would Even be... with VM? What? Even with create VM? Uh, VM is just tainted everywhere, so I don't think you can really rely on it to be anything. <laughs> Fair. I'm, Fair. I'm sorry. I, 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 no, I, I, I didn't understand that. Create VM is like uh, create a same origin iframe, just creating another realm mm. without a callable boundary between. Is there, am I missing of. something there? So create VM actually copies various globals over it anyway. So I am unclear if it is inheriting that behavior from JavaScript or the JS DOM original implementation in C++ that caused various copying behavior. I could check if this works. Create VM in short is itself insane. Uh, yes, it got a security audit recently by somebody who didn't read the doc saying it's not for security reasons. And they were sad. <laughs> if something, if the, how, whatever, whatever the, we can't let into the JavaScript, the dynamic JavaScript semantics, a communication paths, path through dynamic scope, a contagion of things like function prototype constructor through dynamic scope. These things have to be lexically captured and then used from the lexical capture. Do since this completely goes away with a shadow realm, the callable boundary, like, is there, how much do we care? I care a decent amount because I know some sites that are actually using iframes. Like, I don't think they'll migrate to shadow realms anytime soon. And we propose an attack on something that's using iframes as a security boundary that uses this. I mean, the best person to ask would be Salesforce. There's also a few things like Stack Blitz, maybe. Well, I, 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 I don't fully understand the problem yet. So I to work with Leo and trying to understand what's going on here. I was uh, I have to step up and I came back and 
you guys are already past the part yeah. of the conversation. Sure. So yeah, and um, we're we're almost at time. So what I propose is that uh, so, so so the the synopsis is that with this mechanism that they're proposing for finally that probably already exists for catch and then it is possible to communicate the uh, to communicate the function prototype constructor across realms um and i think that just saying those words makes it pretty clear that there might be a way to escape around an iframe using this technique you might be able to uh construct a function that executes in another realm if the um, other realm awaits you in some form or fashion yeah so um, I'm going to leave it at that. We're at 10.59. Let's just briefly look over this. Uh, uh, Shadow Realm will skip for today. We've already talked about records and tuples, I think, in detail. And I, um, I shared, I shared a, a code example to run without test 262, just in case. Awesome. Thank you. Um, the... Decorator's proposal is back. Um, do we, uh, well, we do not have time to get into this in significant detail, but if, if somebody's interested in this one, uh, please take a look. Uh, and uh, I think we already Le covered Ray from. Le Leo, the JS fiddle that you just shared in the Zoom chat, which is about to go away, could you uh, put that someplace more permanent? Um, I will capture it and put it somewhere where you can find it. Um, oh, I can put it in the in the agenda doc. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good good one. Good place for everyone here. All right. Um, thank you for coming today. Let me stop my share and stop the recording. <laughs>